It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hi, and welcome back to the show. Hope you enjoyed the um, macaroni and cheese. Mmm, that was good, wasn't it, Callie's? Yeah. Now we're going to be making some more comfort food, and this is going to be uh, meatloaf. Meatloaf is uh, a thousand and one ways of making meatloaf. Everybody has a different recipe. Just like making potato salad, just a ton of different recipes out there. You know, this is the one I like to use. It's easy, it doesn't have a lot of ingredients in it, and it's very um, universal. It makes great meatloaf. You can also use the um, recipe for making meatballs too if you'd like. Um, I like to have my meatloaf a little bit on the firmer side and not so crumbly when you cut into it. I just hate when that happens because you can't get a nice good firm loaf. And what that happens from is a lot of people will dice up onions and celery and stick it in their meatloaf, which is good, but then they don't put enough binder in there. So when you cut into it, you got to remember that those onions and celery have a lot of water content in them. And so when your meatloaf bakes, that water seeps out of the onions and the celery into the meatloaf and when it cools off and you go to cut it, you notice how it all falls apart on you and crumbly and it's not a firm meatloaf type of firm um, piece of meat. I like mine to be more firm and uh, I want to, well I like a meatloaf but you know I want it firmer <laughs> and not so crumbly and loose. So anyway, what I'm doing here is I like to use the mixer. I can do it by hand too if, if you want to, but I like using the mixer because it really incorporates all your ingredients so that it's evenly distributed. And what I'm putting in here first now is I've got uh, about a pound, it's about three pounds, so it's about, about a pound and a half to two pounds of hamburger. So I'm going to take and fill up your my meatloaf pan, which is your bread pan, and this is the one pound size. So I don't want the large one and a half pound ones because I want this to be more firm and compact. So I got about a pound and a half of meat, about two pounds of meat. I want to put in a little, a little bit more. I want about closer to two pounds. Yeah, that's about better. About, about two pounds. Then, of course, I'm going to put in my eggs. Now the egg is going to take and mix up in with the meat. And this helps to bind. Oh, Kelly Ellie. What that? What the one? Oh, she just attacked. <laughs> she was napping on the couch and now she's wide awake. So we got our three eggs into the two pounds of ground beef. Next I'm going to take and put in some garlic powder. And I don't need a heavy amount. Oh, about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon, depending on your taste. And then I'm going to put in some Italian seasonings in the same way. I like to put in about a teaspoon full. My other ingredient that I like to put in is oatmeal. Now the oatmeal is going to bind up, and I use the quick cooking oats. Not the, not the rolled oats, but the quick cooking oats. And this will dissolve and mix up in with the meat. And this is what's going to bind this meat together and make it nice and firm. Then, I like to put in my secret ingredients, barbecue sauce. You can put in whatever you want. I usually like to put in about a quarter cup. And that gives it a really nice flavor. Now you just want to make sure this is all incorporated now. You want to keep blending this together. And I have it on low because you don't want to, you know, put it all over the house. But I can see by adding the more moisture to it, it's going to get, start to get loose. So I'm going to put in a little bit more oatmeal. So all together I probably put in about a cup. Now we'll just let this mix. That's clinging to it now from the sides of the bowl. It's not a lot of moisture on the side. That's just the way we want. Now cars, don't forget to spray your pans either. That's going to help out. And then that's all there is to it. Now we'll just take this out. And we're going to put this in our pan. 
and you can just feel it too. If it feels too moist, too wet, then add a little bit more oatmeal to it. And if it's too dry, you can always add a little bit more barbecue sauce to it to moisten it out or another egg. But this is just right. Mm. Oh, you can smell the meat, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delicious. Now this here just come to the top of the pan. This is just perfect. Now when you put this in, you want to pack it in there nice and tight. This is going to be great because it's not dry and it's not wet either. But you want to pack that in there nice and good. Eat that right, Kelly's. Yeah. Then I always take and put a little bit more barbecue sauce on top, about a tablespoon. And then with that, I just take and spread that all over the top of your meatloaf. Now my oven is preheated, it's at 350 degrees, and this will probably bake, it varies, I can't give you the exact time, but approximately, I would say about 45 minutes or so. Uh, what you want to do then is, um, I'm going to take and put another pan under this, just in case it should bubble over as far as the grease goes. We don't want that in the bottom of the oven. So I'm just going to put a piece of foil underneath that too. And then I'm just going to roll up the edges to make a makeshift pan. And that's just going to help to catch any grease that should happen to boil over out, out, of, the, out of the meatloaf pan. See, now just, that works out just fine. I don't catch it just in case. I'm just better safe than sorry. I just hate having to clean the oven. <laughs> I know it. I hate it. <laughs> I do it at work and it's like, oh, it's a chore. So then, like I said, we'll just put this in the oven and wait. we'll check it in about 45 minutes. We want the internal temperature to be at least 160 to 165 degrees. Okay, now our meatloaf is done. Mmm. And this is very hot. I just pulled it out of the oven. And it's about, oh, about 50 minutes or so. I stuck the thermometer in, it's 160, and that's what you want to get to at least. And be careful so you don't drop it out. I'm just pouring off the excess grease and we're going to let this sit and cool for about 10 minutes or so because you want it to set. If you tip it out and start cutting in right now it's going to fall apart and that's true just about anything. So you just want to take and just let it sit for about 10 minutes before we take it out of the pan and start cutting into it. Oh, why are you quiet? So you got your toy, yeah. I got stinky stinkies, yeah, yeah. And now here's our finished product of the meatloafs. I just put a little barbecue sauce on top to drizzle over that. But you can see it's nice and firm without being dry. It's still moist. Mmm. And then these are our seven layer bars for a nice little dessert. These would be great. And then I just topped off a little chopped salad here. And this is just cucumber, tomato, cilantro, and salted peanuts. And that just makes a simple little dressing. But oh boy, is this ever good, isn't it, Callie? Mmm. Callie got a sample too, don't you? Yeah. Piece of meatloaf. Mmm, good. Yeah.